Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen, or as we say in Krakoan, ha ga 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 Today, we're going to take a look at the latest in the Dawn of X series, New Mutants number one, written by our old pal Jonathan Hickman, co-written by Ed Brisson with art by Rod Rice, today on Comic Book News. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today, let's talk about New Mutants number one by Jonathan Hickman, Ed Brisson, art by Rod Rice. This is the first issue of the all new ongoing New Mutants series, part of this Dawn of X group, right? This is all, they canceled all of the X Men books before House of X and Powers of X, and now they're all back, right? Uh, we started with a bunch of X books of varying quality, came out with House of X very high quality everybody's enjoying it regular x-men series so far so good the spin-offs uh they're okay so far we'll talk about new mutants today i think i like this one a little bit more than excalibur but you know what instead of just talking about it let's go right to the million dollar comic scam <laughs> Hey, uh, here we are in the uh, million dollar comic scam, right? And today, uh, let's get a look at the inside of this New Mutants number one. Man, this newfangled style of art by Rod Rice. Very interesting stuff. Um, it looks very painterly. I'm willing to bet it was all done in the computer. There was no pencils, inks, colors, or anything listed. This is just art by Rod Rice. So here it is. You, you'll like it or you won't. Uh, I think it's fine. I think it works well here. Uh, th he's good at rendering characters and stuff. There's not a super ton of action going on in this book, so uh, let's dive in a little bit. Well, we open up to the resurrection of one Ron Sinclair, a.k.a. Wolvesbane, by Professor X. They welcome her back to the world. In case you don't know it now, X-Men don't die anymore. In fact, even the ones that already died don't have to stay dead. We can bring them back. Turns out we've been recording their genetics and recording their essence, their uh, mental state and everything else that makes you you or them them. We've been recording that and we can, through a convoluted resurrection process involving five mutants, we can recreate any mutant, uh, living or dead, from bygone eras or whatever. So Ron Sinclair has come back and she's introduced to the new age of X-Men on Krakoa, which she's viewing as a paradise right she's uh she's just another she's a uh wolf in paradise if you will um here's the team we're going to be dealing with uh in new mutants a lot of familiar faces and a couple less familiar so we've got uh, karma wolvesbane cypher mirage and sunspot and magic those are classic new mutants from the original team adding to that we're bringing in this character mondo uh, and Chamber, right? Chamber, I'm somewhat familiar with. Oh, did I mention Doug Ramsey Cypher? I might have skipped that. So he's of the core original team. Chamber is the guy with his mutant powers, blew his mouth off. He's got crazy energy powers. This guy, Mondo, is sort of like a kind of an earth elemental type, right? Like he can absorb things from the earth. He can absorb power from it and digest it and be super strong and do other things. And it's this tie into the earth and ecology that uh, gives us some suspicious stuff about Krakoa, even more suspicious stuff. So here we go uh, into the uh, double page title spread, right? Which every one of these books is getting. Let's not get started on decompression, recompression. Uh, the, there's a lot of stuff in the, with the text pieces in these books. And actually, this one has some fairly important pieces. I'm going to save those for the end, though. First, we'll go through and we'll see our man Mondo. And he's really trying to commune with Krakoa because that's supposed to be his deal, right? That's what he's supposed to be able to commune with Mother Nature, but he can't. Um, instead, Doug says, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I can ask Krakoa to commune with you. And so instantly, Krakoa takes over Mondo's body. Not exactly sure what, what that distinction um, bodes. Not sure why he couldn't commune with... Um, Krakoa could commune with him. It's just more sinister stuff going on under the surface for Krakoa. Anyway, 
uh, Coco didn't really like doing it so much apparently, so he's not going to do it in the future. But we've got the feeling something there's just something not quite right about um, about Krakoa, and uh, and Mondo never wants to do it again. So here we are checking out the New Mutants' home, and we get to see all kinds of cool characters in the background that we we may or may not recognize. Uh, I recognize some of these characters from like Grant Morrison's X Men. Uh, these look like the Hellions, and you know they've given. Amnesty to all mutants so villains and whatever it doesn't matter if you're a mutant you live together here But you know, don't you think there would be some animosity still between these groups that had like giant fist fights with each other in the past Whatever They're all one now. It's all unity So anyway, we get to see more about uh, uh, Krakoa and more Hickman's kind of humor uh, They've introduced coffee to Krakoa apparently uh, Chamber got it to happen, but they offer some, and Magic is very addicted to coffee and doesn't want anybody to drink from her giant cup. Hilarious. Uh, and Mondo is like, I don't want to drink a cup because I saw the way that other dude made the, some other mutant made the coffee, alluding to a very, like, disgusting, gross process that may have happened. All right, funny stuff. Um, so we get to know more, uh, and, 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 and we get to see the interaction between the team. You know, they're old friends. They've known each other forever. They were the original new mutants. They're really like family to the X-Men and they've decided they're missing one of their core family, one, uh, cannonball, right? So they're going to go, uh, cannonballs in outer space, apparently from some previous X-Men adventures. So they're going to go for a ride and, uh, they hitch a ride with the star jammers. Now, there's just, like, no explanation of this other than in a previous X-Men book we saw Star Jammers now have a Krakoan flower, which allows transport. So this is going to make the Star Jammers, like, a player. Like, they can instantaneously drop in and out of the X-Men. Um, and when uh, Sunspot and the team need a ride to uh, the Shire Empire to look for Sam Cannonball... They're able to get to the Shire ship who can drop them off there because the Star Jammers, the ship, the Star Jammer, uh, is on, they're on their pirate mission, right? They're space pirates, so they're out doing their thing. Um, they've got their own kind of gateway here um, on their ship, right? In their sort of like biodome in the ship. And again, there's something really weird going on because uh, this dude, I forget his name from the Star Jammers, he's like, you know, there's something weird going on. He says, look here, you see these, you know, his, his plants have started dying and, uh, th these plants, the gateway and the flower that Doug brought seem to be like communicating with each other. And that, and it says they want to terraform. So like something's going on here, right? Krakoa what what is its real agenda behind the scenes it has yet to even uh be poked into and and uh, uh maybe we'll theorize it a little bit at the end of this so anyway next we get into our nice uh um uh fight with uh what's his face from the star jammers and magic they decide hey we both got swords let's have a sword fight see who's the toughest and they got a bet involving bourbon between uh corsair and sunspot and and uh, apparently Magic's a badass because she's able to beat the alien cyborg space pirate and even cut his arm off, apparently. Um, and it's like, ah, ha, ha, you win, you cut my arm off. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, the Star Jammers bring the, the, um, the, the new mutants into outer space and they're like, look, we're going to this planet, but there's crazy, we're going to Shire Empire, right? But there's crazy political instabil instability here. So you've got to stay on the ship. You cannot even step foot out of here or it's going to be big, big trouble. And uh, we can't have that, right? Um, next we get, out of nowhere, sort of this weird text piece. It's sort of like a little out of nothing. It's talking about benevolence and we don't really know what this is. And and there's some, some allusions to stuff that we recognize from the X-Men universe. I'm definitely coming back to this one at the end. So anyway... Uh, the Star Jammers are in outer space. They take off to go do their thing. They leave the X-Men behind or the New Mutants behind who, uh, uh, and, and Sunspot's like, yeah, let's just drink, man. I want all this booze off of Corsair. Let's drink. And so he goes to get the booze. Meanwhile, they disobey Sunspot 
and take off without him to go like free the political prisoners of this planet, right? Like, so Corsair's like, you can't go here. There's all these political factions and they're enslaving people for, for sinning. And if you make any sins, you're going to get tortured. So just stay here, right? He's trying to keep them out of his hair. But they're a bunch of do-gooders. So they decide they're just going to go. They saw his plans. Magic can teleport. They get there to this thing and there's this thing and she grabs it right and only then do the star jammers show up and they're like look you idiots there's no polit this is the shire empire there's no political instability it's a political monoculture there's only one <laughs> political party right or you're dead so that was all just a ruse we're freaking pirates we're here to steal right then what happens the shire guards show up we get into a big fight uh the star jammers are like look man we are not we told you to stay away. We're not here to save you. You want to save somebody? You want to save those political prisoners? Go save yourselves. And they take off. And of course, the new mutants, you know, they try their best. And Chamber unleashes his powers and whatever. And it's great. So anyway, the the uh, the Star Jammers have got their thing, this little ball. And we know what this is from the text piece. And we'll talk about that in a second. And they decide to just take off, basically, and, and leave uh, the new mutants behind here in the Shi'ar Empire you know, to deal with uh, their own crap. Here we get a little bit of Sunspot breaking the fourth wall. Is this where I save the day? It feels like it, doesn't it? Kind of cute. I like what they're doing with Sunspot. They're kind of making him trying to be the leader. He's not so respected. He's kind of funny. He's kind of cocky. Hickman is really good with characterization in the sense that he gives his characters a lot of personality. What we didn't get in this issue is a sun set up about almost any of these characters. We don't really know what any of the New Mutants' powers are or what they can do. That's something that they used to do in every single Marvel comic, right? They would set up the powers. Every single issue, Spider-Man would go over like what his powers are, or Daredevil would go over his origin story and powers in every issue. While that's one extreme I don't want to go back to, I feel like in a number one issue, there should be a little bit of exposition about what these people are and what they can do. But I guess it's assumed that if you're along for the ride, you've been a fan for a long time. Anyway, um, uh, it ends with uh, a callback as uh, Sunspot goes, oh, remember, I've got the number of a good space lawyer. And that's something Corsair told him earlier. And we get our final text piece here, which is really just a joke, a jokey uh, kind of ad for the space lawyer. And so I guess we'll have some fun with that in the future issues. Um, what do we got here? New Mutants number one uh, is what we're on right now in Dawn of X. X-Force number one. I also picked up this week and I'll be doing a review for that as soon as possible. Look for that to drop hopefully tomorrow. Uh, and then finally we've got uh, the closing teaser which says next Lawlessness and Disorder. Okay. And uh, let's go back for a second through the to, to, to the text pieces that, that I talked about. Or, or in particular there's really one that's uh, particularly important, right? So it's this Bennett where, you know, it's not super important, but it adds some color to what happened in the story. And uh, it gives us some clues about what maybe what's going to happen next or soon, right? So basically this is like talking about this benevolence, which is the, um, the, the station that the Star Jammers, the Shire station that the Star Jammers are breaking into to steal that ball thingy. And that ball thingy uh, is, well, first they say, Originally developed as a transit station, Benevolence was recently converted into a temporary repository for exotic material considered too dangerous for inner system storage. Long-term plans for conversion of Benevolence to a populated habitat remains on hold until a shift in brood spawning grounds occur. Current Imperial xenobiologists believe this uh, long-predicted shift appears increasingly unlikely due to the recent collapse of blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then at the end, King Egg, beware the King Egg, always handle with extreme caution. Under no circumstances should a King Egg be removed from its containment shield. Interstellar pheromone production can result in unexpected swarm activity. Never introduce a King Egg into an alien biome. Such activity can trigger super guardian protocols, right? So, okay, right there, what are we talking about? So that egg, the, that ball thing, the King Egg, don't bring it into an alien biome. What is Krakoa but a biome? I had to look up biome. It just means like a habitat. That could be the Star Jammer ship here, but I think probably most likely they're going to return 
They've got the flower, which, by the way, I neglected to mention that it was causing all kinds of trouble on the ship, so they put it inside of Mondo. So he's got the Krakoan teleportation flower in there. Thing is, so the king egg, it's either an egg for a brood king, or um, which I thought we used queens, or um, it's for something else that's like an enemy of the brood, perhaps. And bringing it to Krakoa should create interstellar pheromones that uh, would attract the brood, right? So we can expect the brood, but also can trigger super guardian protocol. So what's a super guardian, but maybe guardian of the Shi'ar and their whole super team, uh, analog of the Justice League and Superman? We love guardian, right? Cool character, uh, cool X-Men guy. So uh, we're back to... Uh, uh, talk about what all this means, right? I Did I like this? I liked it. I didn't love it. Co-written by Hickman, okay? I feel like um, it didn't get his full attention, but it's definitely, he's got his fingers in there and he's planting key clues that are going to tie in. I felt like this is much more closely tied in and important um, to X-Men than, than so far what I've read in, uh, in Excalibur. Uh, and we'll talk about X-Force uh, really soon and what I thought about that. Um, but, hey, until that time, thank you for watching these videos, man. Oh, man, uh, my last X-Men video is my most viewed video uh, about comics of all time. Uh, I want to thank you folks for checking it out. If you're new, if you're uh, newly watching this, recommended by YouTube, thank you. Welcome aboard. I hope that you will hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, hit a like. And if you got something to say, say it in the comments section because we've got one of the best comment sections uh, in all of YouTube comics world, right? I curate it. I read every single message. I get rid of the garbage and uh, I promote and answer the good comments. So please, please, please take a moment. And if you got something to say, I want to hear it. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.